Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff die has friends. No, really, Jeff has friends. Jeff's friends are on this podcast. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies friendship. Jeff dies. Friendship. Welcome back to Jeff Dye's Friendship Podcast, episode number eight. I'm very excited about this. Uh, if you've never listened to this podcast before, it's called Jeff Dye's Friendship because I want to feature my guests who are my friends. And I want you to get to know them and then become your friends too. I've always said friendship is my family. And uh, people have always said, why don't you have a podcast? You have a pod. Do you listen to so and so's podcast? Podcasts are really great. I think you should get into podcasts. So now I'm finally in the podcast game, and I'm enjoying myself a lot because I get to have my friends come over uh, to my my home where we record, and uh, and we just talk and tell stories. And it doesn't matter if you're a famous friend or a, or a not famous friend. Uh, you're welcome on the podcast if you're a friend. Uh, this week is a very good friend of mine who I've known for. Uh, just over a decade, we go. We have season tickets to the Clippers together. We enjoy pro wrestling together, and he's a manager of my home comedy club, the Comedy and Magic Club. Richard Barrett. He's one of my favorite dudes, and I think any comedians who might like this podcast will enjoy this episode the most because it's. Very, he talks about what he goes through when he books the Comedy Magic Club, what it takes. Uh, the standards. It's not just about filling seats. It's about being funny also, which is a unique thing in comedy nowadays. Most bookers are torn between who draws and who's great. And there's very few that are both. And uh, he talks about how he has no interest in the draw part and a lot of interest in the entertaining and fun, funny part, which is a lot to hear, or just ha- makes me happy to hear as a comedian. Um, but it's a fun episode. It's kind of a chill episode, a very inside baseball comedy episode, but I think you're going to love it. And he's one of my most dearest friends. I think you're going to love him. Uh, also, if you want to watch this episode, just go over to Patreon. Go to uh, www.patreon.com backslash Jeff Die, and you can watch the podcast if you become a subscriber, or you can listen to it for free on iTunes and Podbean and a bunch of other places where you find your podcasts. Um, enjoy the episode. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Also, this episode was brought to you by JeffDye.com. So swing on through there. It's a real funny comedian, and uh, he's, he's paying for this episode, though. Respect. Thanks, Jeff. And we're in. Guys, it's, I'm so happy to be back. We're back, baby. Tony was gone. He had a birthday. Yes. Yeah, you were... Happy birthday, by the way. Happy hey, birthday. birthday. Um, you went home. Yes. I was very jealous of how close you are with your family and how cute those videos were. <laughs> it was adorable. I also got to spend some time with you and your brothers at the marriage Yeah, that game. was so much fun. We had a blast. Made um, me happy. Got to hang out with my brothers. Yeah. And awesome. I bought him Donkey Kong Country because I'm a good friend. Yes, and I love uh-huh. it so much. Yeah. It's just I like whenever I buy or tip or do anything good in the world, I like to let everyone know. I like to mention it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look what I donated to charity. And everyone's <laughs> like, did you please. beat Donkey Kong yourself? Say what? <laughs> did you beat Donkey Kong Country Not yet? yet. I'm oh, okay. it what a silly question. I'm playing it slowly. Yeah. It's great. And thing. Aaron Marsh. Oh, how you guys doing? Hey, I got Iron no Donkey Kong. Here. No birthdays. The Iron Man. Yeah, I was mad at your family for having cute videos and loving you. But Sorry. you got a promotion at work, which we're all happy about. I got a promotion at work. I yeah, know. I got That's a awesome. desk and stuff now. Killing it. Killing it. And our featured guest and feature friend on the Friendship Podcast, Richard Barrett's here. Yes. All right. You know, Jeff, right. it feels like yeah, deja vu. Yeah, That's right, here, man. That's how. <laughs> doing this podcast, uh, being in your wonderful house again. Thank you for we're having me. We're one of the me. only podcasts that prides ourselves on rehearsals. <laughs> That's right. Sometimes it's what it takes. That's what I like. Sometimes it's you what it takes. What? Mm-hmm. As long as it's being captured by Tony, we're good. Well, as long as you're saying nice things, it's good to hear him twice. Yeah. That's, That's what right. I say. That's right. yeah. uh, Richard is... An incredible friend of mine. I want I, I one of my only friends. I like brag about often. Whenever people mention the Comedy Magic Club or the Clippers or any of the things that are on brand with Richard, I'm always like, oh, I know a guy. Like I, my best friend, one of my friends, Richard. And so I also feel like you've been with me in my life 
through weird times and high times and low times. So that means a lot to me. And then uh, we also just like all the same stuff. How... When did I first meet you? How long ago? 2008. 2008. So yeah. a decade. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. That's long yeah. time. I came here from Last Comic Standing, and I was trying to figure out where I would fit. Like the laugh at, where do I put the time? Sure. You know, because you can pick any of them, but you have to just put in the time and the work. You and can pick any of them. Right. Well, I mean, like I'm saying, if you're just starting at the bottom, yeah. but you, you choose any. choose where you want to attempt, like your your first go or, yeah, sure. or anything like that. If you're going to have somewhere that you're going to consider your home club at any level, yeah. you have to have goals like that. When I went to the store and I was like, no, thank you. And then yeah. Laugh Factory, I couldn't even get in. That was a tough in. time for the store, too. It was weird. Yeah. Well, and then like when I went to Laugh Factory, no one would even let me in. It was just like, uh, it was just like this... Uh, front door guy who was like, "Can I help you?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm a comedian." And he's like, "Okay." And I was like, "All right, never mind." Uh, or no, he goes, "Are you on tonight?" And I was like, "No." And then he's like, "Okay, well then." And I was like, "All right, goodbye." I went over to the improv, and I really liked the improv. Yeah, I remember thinking that was great. And then Heath Heitch like messaged me on MySpace, he's like, "Dude, come to the comedy Ma- you can come with me." And I was like, "All right." And then I like fell in love with the Comedy Magic Club. I thought I was like, "This is everything that I want to work at." Heath is a wonderful guy. I'm happy he's happy and he's got a, at least one kid now and yeah uh denver i think is where he lives yep. but I, I miss i wish he was out here oh, he's a great Heath. guy yeah, yeah, yeah great yeah. vibe to be around the club too uh, get super positive always happy very yeah. up you know and the club loves him the, or not just the club like the club loves every comic that goes there but i'm saying the audience one of my mom my mom uh was always like why doesn't heath come out to jacksonville anymore uh, I know he didn't draw that time, but uh, I'll bring my friends. You know, <laughs> she's like, there's always like Take uh, it personal, uh, right? Yeah. I'll bring my friends. Yeah. That's how bad she wants Heath awesome. back. Yeah, no, that's she hilarious. Loves him. Yeah, he's well, great. He does, uh, very fun, very funny, very original, and uh, he's got an uh, a quality I admire, uh, which. You'd be surprised how many comics don't have the fearlessness that he has. Really? Like, he could walk out there. Darren Carter's another one where they can walk out on stage and they're fine with a little silence. And they're going to try something that might come off super goofy or weird, (laughs) you know? But they're committed to it and they have to stay in it. You can't go halfway through a bit wearing an outfit and not with props and then, you know, just toss them and... Start over again, you know? So Heath is a guy who's very funny, and we all like him. Great behind, like in the green room, and great in the show room. Yep. Uh, are there any comics you have who you just like, you think are funny, but they have a tougher time with the Hermosa Beach audience? With the Hermosa Beach audience? Not many. Most of my friends are probably through the club because I see them regularly. Um so, uh, you know, but I mean, like Aaron's become a, a new friend and he doesn't, hasn't played the club yet, yeah. you know, but he's still on the, on the, my demands are too high on the grind. Well, I mean, like, uh, for example, like <laughs> Dana Tosh is incredible. Yeah. He's one of my favorite comedians and he's hilarious and he crushes cause he's just super talented, but there have been times where I saw him just like pop into the, to that club and not do that. Well, cause he's, cause the crowd's like, this guy will say anything. Right. He'll, he's, he's not a fr- like. I don't have, but you know, thankfully, the acts that don't do well regularly aren't going to be at the club very often. Right, right, right. You know, well, I've seen like There's David Tell. Like I think that, I was there once when a David Tell was like, "Oh, what it was like, you were great." A lot of comics think that they didn't do right. Great. There's a story. A guy Tory told me once that uh, <laughs> he. His, we were talking standing ovations. He said he missed his first standing ovation because he was backstage kicking the locker because he had flubbed uh, some <laughs> some joke that he wanted. Every and then time. the MC is like, "Did you see that? You got a standing ovation." <laughs> and he's like, "No, oh. I screwed up the the, the bit." That's and so he's fun. kicking something in the back. So comics always have a perception. You know when you did well. Uh, some guys obviously don't have that. They think I sure. crushed every single time, but. Most of the good comics have a feel for, you know, how receptive the audience was because uh, you still have good sets and bad sets, you yeah. know, where stuff just doesn't connect for whatever reason. Your charisma doesn't reach a big enough portion of the crowd. Uh, the jokes, you know, you you know what jokes tend to work and mm-hmm. what, you know you're working on. Yeah. Uh, once you hit a certain point. Well, also, we hold the crowds to like a different. Not a different level, but the same level no matter what. So, like, I'll crush on Saturday early, and then I'll also do well on Saturday late, but I'll think 
because Saturday late crowd wasn't as loud or as packed or whatever as Saturday right, early. I'm like, as well. Ugh. right? But like, no, it's fine. It was just that's that's what that crowd was. Do you prefer an early show versus a late show now? Yeah, yeah. I've never been was, late show. There were so many acts that used to hate the early show no. and just do the late show. Well, and I, you know, and I know that that I might seem edgier than some of the comedians at Comedy Magic Club, but like when it comes to like the road scene and stuff, I'm very clean and yeah. tame compared to most. Yeah, yeah, and so it's like. I like that eight o'clock crowd. I like the people who want to hear jokes and want to hear bits and material. Usually, the earlier crowd they've dedicated their their not just their night, but a good portion of their day yeah. to you yeah. know. If you're like, hey, we're gonna go see an eight o'clock show, which means we're gonna go get there at six thirty to have something to eat, which means we need to be there at right. six right. fifteen for parking, which means we need to leave the house at five fifteen, which means we need to be showered by. Yeah. You, know, yeah. <laughs> you start going back and you're like, why wow, you really dedicated a good portion of your <laughs> yeah. your evening to the show, and then. They're there and they tend to be like, this is what we're doing with our night. We're invested in it. Now, that's at a comedy club. A they bar care. is certainly yeah. different. But for a, for a comedy club, the audience is generally on your side because someone in their party has made that decision that, hey, we're going to the club tonight because this is going to be fun. Yeah, it's worth So he's yeah. ready for you to have a good time. Yeah. So, you know, the crowd's not against you in a comedy club. You know, a bar setting, hey, who knows what you're walking into. Right. But in a comedy club, the crowd's behind you and wants you to do well for the most part. When I think in a late crowd, and not to sound like I'm being mean to other comedians, but some comics need them to be drunk or like prefer, that they're like, oh, it's way better when they're drunk and rap. Right. You're like, why would you want them? What's well, the atmosphere they're selling? Almost unfocused. Right. Like Burt Kreischer, like, He's all about making a huge party. And some people right. are like, I'm not partied up at 8. I need to be partied up at 10.30. Right. Sure. And Bert has, I, I've seen him on stage. He's, he's very funny. Florida yeah. State uh, uh, graduate as well. Uh, he uh, has like an ADD on stage where he really jumps around like crazy. Mm. He doesn't stick to a script at all. And so uh, I think he needs a crowd that's also kind of like that, that can right. just kind of jump in when they want and listen to a bit and not worry about, yeah, what about the story you were telling us a minute right. ago, you know? Mm. Sometimes crowds think like, uh, what is this, not planned? Right. Like, yeah, they're like insulted. Like, why? how come they haven't? Which is how I feel about improv comedy. And then what, you guys of, are just making this up on the spot? Yeah. There's a lot of people who do think that, though, still with stand-up comedy, that you're like, oh, you're just coming up with this stuff oh, and yeah, talking yeah. to us, you know? Only it's when it's done rehearsed. right or yeah. awful. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> what do you think the big difference is when you between you having a good show or a bad show? Um, I definitely bomb still, for sure. But never like at a club and never for like a headlining gig. Right. I, haven't, I, haven't, I can't remember the last time I like bombed like headlining. However, there'll be times when I just like do a guest set and I just didn't connect with them. Yeah. Or I overthink the opening. And so, like, I go, I, I like, I've already lost them. You're like, just right away. the entire yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I might sort of get them for the last couple of jokes. But short sets has, like, been my Achilles heel. And I've, I've been trying to master it this, like, last two years because that's what late shows are yep. and that's what those things are. But, like, that's just a different muscle. It's almost entirely different, yeah. you know? You have to be so tight, so concise, worried about every little transition. Every single joke needs to work in the yeah. short set. When the first joke's the most important. You have to when it's a short set. set. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so, even for your psyche, right. you know, that for most acts, it's like if that first one doesn't hit, they're a little thrown rattled and a little yeah. tossed, you know? Well, and that's, I do think that's kind of like not manipulative, but I do it. I manipulate the audience a little bit into like almost thinking that they don't like me at first and then be like, no, he's my favorite comedian. I like them to kind of go through that emotion right. of being like, he's good. And then halfway through being like, no, this guy's really good. As opposed to just starting, like, I don't know. I, for some reason, I like massaging him into that. Slowing it it's down weird. and then kind of building up. Yeah, but you go to comedy a lot, right? Like you, like you used to at least. Yeah, I still get out, uh, not nearly as often as I did when when I was single. Right. But now I probably get out uh, maybe like every other week. Okay. I get to go out and see well, something. I don't think a lot of people know that, and I think a lot of comedians that will listen to this will be surprised to hear this, and even if it's changed a little since you've gotten married. But you used to go to like comedy sets, like just Constantly. around, like yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah. I was, so I was like, probably during- which clubs were at the most. Most of the time, I was running to some of the clubs more out of L.A., like Irvine, Brea. I'd even make the drive out to Ontario. I'd go up to the Ice House. I'd go to Flappers. Mm-hmm. I tended to go to shows where people, for the most part, had paid to see 
shows and the comics took them a little bit more serious. Mm. Uh, when I would run up to the improv in, in LA, uh, laugh factory, or even the store, uh, too many guys working on stuff or having fun with the crowd, uh, instead of doing like a serious set. And so I would often go disappointed because I, I still get a, I do a listing of every club and, and a bunch of the theaters around each town each week. And I just kind of look and see, is there anything that I should be mm. checking out or that I'm not sure about? And then uh, we'll pop in those shows. And 95% of the time, not telling the acts that I'm going to be there to watch That's them. That's what I was going to say, too. Tell them that mm-hmm. I, You're like an undercover yeah. comedy, like, scout. Yeah. Because, just like, a, a lot of the acts, and, like, I can't remember the, who it is, and it probably wouldn't want to mention the name anyways, but I told someone, like, oh, Richard uh, mentioned you and said that you were very funny a few weeks ago or whatever. And and then they were like, who's Richard? I was like, oh, he books the Comedy Magic Club. He manages the club. And they are like, oh, Really? And I was like, yeah. And they go, when did he see me? Like, they had no idea right. <laughs> that you even knew who they were. It's it's tough sometimes for me when I'm talking to someone because our, our club is the mainstream club in town. And so we do ask the acts to work on the clean side for the most part. And so I'll see acts. And one of the things that – one of the main things that holds back a lot of funny acts for us it, are them not working clean. Mm-hmm. And when, once you see it, it's tough to imagine them – not working or, or not working dirty or, or cleaner without seeing it personally. Cause you, you go, Oh, this is what's in my head now is you yeah. talking about these subjects and cursing. And so when you come and tell me you have something clean, I want to see it, but now I need to see it first before I'm going to bring it into our club because I'm a little bit Suspicious. hesitant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just cause we have a much different, idea of what what we consider clean every club across the country and so I, i'm always when i'm talking with comics for the first time let them know if you have any questions about material run it by me because uh and that's what i do with plenty of comics that work the club already they'll come and say hey is this too dirty and they'll just start running the bit for me because then it's on me and i can tell you directly yes or no or if i say or me being you if you say yes that's probably fine and it doesn't go over you're like well you did check with me <laughs> oh I, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. True. As far as whether it's funny or enough that's always going to be right. i'm leaving that in the comment for the comic i'm not going to tell someone well but like they'll say it's like cool, oh you know. i felt like they thought they groaned and then you're like yeah well but you ran it by me and that's fine it's yeah, not oh like, yeah, yeah i'm not going to come but i'm not going to come tell someone hey we need to clean up a certain bit mm-hmm. that i already told them was, yeah, of was fine and yeah. I then you know I, hey stuff changes and maybe i walk up and say something but i that that hasn't happened yet so you I, know when you ran that bit by me it didn't have all those f words in it <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> i think that it's great that the club's clean people are so or just any like just say like tv sets like when jimmy fallon's like hey i'd love for you to submit to the tonight show but it has to be clean nobody's like oh right uh, how clean is clean? You're like you know, well, like, there's an understanding why because the network has like a standards and practices that you know they have to follow for you know their advertising and mm-hmm. just running on on network TV. Now the reason the club does it, and, and here's why, is that uh, during our, our weekdays, especially a, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we do a lot of charity and benefit stuff uh, where we uh, not for people that speak French. It's a swear word joke. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we stopped the momentum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I feel bad. Now. I feel yeah. guilty. There is a I guilt. saw you look too. Look. Yeah. What uh, the fuck? Pardon my French. <laughs> so we we host a lot of uh, uh, charity events and we help people raise funds for nonprofit organizations uh, on those nights. And so we have a lot of a lot of times you'll have. A, a comic, for the most part, will say to if a crowd member is having a problem with something they're saying on stage, they'll reason it with, hey, you came to a comedy club. What did you expect? Exactly. Because comedy clubs are, for the most part, known for a freedom of expression on stage. Uh, we do ask the acts to work clean because we have a lot of charity and, and benefits stuff that comes through. And a lot of people will be attending the club to support that cause versus just going to the club on their own. Sure. Yeah. And uh, so those people aren't expecting a certain type of show. Uh, so we look for acts that can relate to everybody. We, we're not a, a, a place that looks for a niche type of following. Uh, we don't do any type of theme nights or anything like that. We just put the best comics on every single night that we can and ask the act, look for acts that reach as big a, you know, a, a 
section of the crowd as possible. Nobody's going to hit everybody, but we have acts that come darn near close. If uh, uh, And then magicians, whatever the heck they want to do. Right. <laughs> What's the commitment you know to the there's magicians? A lot of people, there's a lot of, lot of times lot of- at the end of a night where the variety act is the favorite act for yeah. a good number of people. A good portion of the crowd. Uh, we like to remind the crowd: you don't have to pick. There's you something. Don't have uh, to... Yeah. There's something. Uh, um, you know, there's some really phenomenal performers, and it's not just magicians at the club. We have jugglers. We have all sorts of variety acts, and uh, it's just something a little bit different from the norm. It really can can break up the show uh, and and changes the dynamic of the of the room a little bit. Wait, where how do you scout those kind of acts? Same, same, way. same processes with comics. I go see shows a lot uh, a lot of theater shows Vegas type stuff I, I'm a member of the Magic Castle I go there quite a bit um, and then a lot of referrals through other uh, um, performers mm-hmm. uh, guys who work cruise ships a lot that, there's a lot of that going on and then just different uh, conventions there's there's juggling conventions there's magic conventions oh my god you go to a juggling convention I have yet to Go to one, but okay. Uh, and I was, but I was just <laughs> looking at one. It's happening in July, unfortunately. Couldn't be which is worse than what me and Aaron went to on Mother's uh, Day. We went to Adult Con, and it was the worst convention I've ever been to in my life. I'm fine saying that on air. I've seen the uh, the billboards. <laughs> it is. So brutal. Know we thought it'd be funny. Like I was like single Mother's Day, but it wasn't. It was. <laughs> we thought mothers. it was Milf's Day, and it was yeah. just uncomfortable to say the most. Was it busy? No, no, no. Over half of, or maybe about half of the people were just. It was. Baron, and so much so, like they gave us a free ticket for next time. So, like, sorry, it's Mother's That's Day. That's how they so showed up. They're like, here's tickets to come. Yeah, like, they're already apologetic. I don't think they factored that Mother's Day would be such a day that no one would show up. Not yeah. audience wise, but like girls wise. But those perverts were committed. Uh, they were like, no, uh, I'm not going to lose it this. It was so footage. depressing. Just a big open air area with girls signing and like little, and like, you know, like a Comic Con where they have like little booths and, uh, you know, like curtains and. They sell a merch? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, it was so depressing. Was we, we 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 went. I, I paid like 50 bucks a ticket to go to this thing. We, we go. <laughs> and then uh, we, oh we, we did everything you could do. We stood around till it was like super uncomfortable for both of us where we're like, this is just uncomfortable. Let's leave. So when we leave, we looked, I looked at my watch. We were only in there for like 28 minutes. What? And, yeah. and we did everything you could do. We saw everything you could we see. Saw every and booth. stood and looked at like a girl lathering up another girl, fully clothed, by the way. Yeah, there was uh, no nudity. There was no nudity. Uh, and and then we were still like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> what was Just that? so many guys were filming. And like, oh, yeah, it was like yeah, everyone yeah. was phones sure, out. Sure, sure, sure. And it was like, like so it, all fully clothed though. So if you could imagine every girl walking by getting filmed by multiple dudes. In her clothes. It was so uncomfortable. Yeah, you're just like, what? No, we're just too scoundrels. Much just a bunch of scoundrels. That's so what weird. was the best part of it other than leaving? Don't. I think <laughs> watching Aaron make inappropriate jokes about literally everything uh, we saw. Nice. That would have been fun. <laughs> yeah. I think about I was that. really he uncomfortable. He is the perfect guy to be yeah, in yeah, yeah. Right <laughs> alley. Here's some of my yes. favorite lines from Aaron Marsh. Yes, oh, no. let's uh, go. This is the closest I've ever been to meeting my internet history. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. true. I said that. Uh, what was some of the other ones you dropped that were like, uh, oh gosh, there was a lot of Mother's Day jokes. Yeah, there <laughs> was definitely a lot, mother's, <laughs> a lot of Mother's Day things going on. If you're gonna sure. go somewhere crappy or somewhere great, I recommend you bring Heel Marsh. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he's the guy to go to those certain things. Well, we talked about Con Magic Club. I was surprised when I first started working there that you had jugglers and magicians and female comedians. Uh, but it was it's, uh, it's a great club, and I love it. Thank but, you. What, how did you find yourself? Because you're not a comedian. No. You don't do comedy. How no. did you find yourself working at Comedy Magic Club? Uh, huge fan of stand-up comedy growing up. My parents were very... Uh, they were great growing up. They, I was able to watch anything. and they, I, I was a good kid growing up, but I've been fairly responsible. And so I think they just kind of allowed me to, look, this, this kid doesn't get in trouble. So I, I could listen to whatever I wanted to. Yeah. I could watch whatever I wanted to. There wasn't... I never uh, uh, ooh, become can't a problem. watch can't mm-hmm. watch R-rated movies. Can't do listen to this type. Nothing like that, you know. Um, Which explains so, the hip hop, right? Richard. So, it explains what all the filthy acts going through your club. You <laughs> so I, I watched a lot of stand up and and listened to a lot of stand up growing up. And um, when I I moved out here, I was I had a job I did not like. I ended up leaving that job. And will you say what that job is? Uh, I worked for TWA, the airline. At one time, and oh, I was man. doing well, what's like TWA a, mean? 
It was an airline. That was the that was oh, the name of the airline. Did you do security or the bag no, thing? No, I worked uh, uh, doing like the phones. Okay, yeah, it yeah. sounds awful. It was, it was terrible. It was commission control? based, so I made no, 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 oh. the phones. It was commission based, so I, I ended up making fairly decent money and had good. It was it was a union, so I made I had good uh, benefits. Sure, and we could fly one way anywhere in the country. One way, or, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but that was the price for ten dollars. Oh, I see what you're saying. And oh, yeah. or you could go first class for twenty five. So you nice. Go first class. What? So around trip ticket would be $50 round trip. It's like so Uber I, pool I got prices. to visit a lot of my friends yeah. from college and That's a lot of cool. friends from growing up uh, during that time period. But I didn't enjoy the job. And so I left there and uh, ended up, I was living in near Venice at the time. And I moved down to Manhattan Beach because I used to go to the, the beach down there and hang out. And so I wanted to live in that area. You were uh, making a good living. Yeah. Yeah, living at, in Manhattan Beach. Yeah. I had some money saved up where I figured, you know, uh, uh, I didn't have to get a real job for like half a year or so. And then uh, one of my friends was waitressing at the club. And I kind of made a list of, hey, here are the things I would be interested in. There's basketball, the sports in general, yeah. uh, wrestling, yeah. which is one of the things we have in common. Um, and then comedy was one of them. And so one of my friends was waitressing at the club. And she said there's a position in the front office. And so I, uh, I was like, you know what? Let me go. Maybe I could do that. Uh, for a little while while I figure out what I'm going to do with my life. Yeah. And uh, it's been over 21 years that yeah. I've been there now. So, I love and, that. and I, you know, the coolest thing to me was I was working there and um, I was working in the morning, handling some of the deposit stuff and working in the office and get to meet and greet some of the comics. And then I was able to stay afterwards to watch the shows. Yeah. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world for me because I grew up such a fan. Yeah. And uh, would sit there and watch the shows. And the owner of the club at the time was booking the club, Mike Lacey. And he would ask me all the time. He'd see me in the back and go, hey, what'd you think of the show tonight? Or who'd you like? And what'd you like about them? And so we he started He was real hands on. on back then, right? Yeah, he was there. With the comedy every part. Every single night of the week. He doesn't seem real hands on with the comedy part anymore. Right. Uh He's been very generous and has passed a lot of that on to me yeah. as far as the decisions. He's still my boss and overlooking my shoulders. And I used to say you were the owner because I just uh, didn't know. I was like, Rich does everything. Uh, I, I'm, or not, I'm not trying to take away from what the, no, the no, machine no, 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 does. I, but I it think, just seemed like as a, from a comics perspective, I was like, oh, Richard's the one who texts me. He emails right. me. He, for the last he's decade, the guy I see when I show the up. face of the club for the yeah. last decade, especially with the comics and whatnot, uh, for sure. Uh, but... Yeah, Mike was uh, just very generous and would, you know, guide me through what was going on and kind of took me under his wing and uh, had me help him start booking the, the club slowly. And then eventually, you know, just that became my job and I was able to do that. Yeah. And yeah, he still looks over my shoulder and we still, you know, he'll recommend certain acts that he likes or he'll he'll tell me, uh, you know, oftentimes... Uh, is that show strong enough is one of the questions we mm. have where I'll say, Hey, here's who is on the show. And he'll be like, God oh, boy, you know, is that show strong enough? Should we, you know, interesting. And so it's one of those mm. things where I'm constantly, you know, going, eh, let me see if I can add another act or oftentimes I'll be like, yeah, it is. It's, we'll be fine. <laughs> it's strong enough. You know? <laughs> yeah. So we're very lucky. We have a lot of good quality performers that run through the club. And, yeah. Uh, everyone works that club. Even people like just popping in, like, I can't remember how, I think at least, Five times in the last 10 years of knowing you, like, you'd be like, ah, I wish you were in town. Jerry Seinfeld's coming in. And I was like, ah, like, that's insane that a club has that. Yeah, the first time I ever went, George Wallace was dropping in. Yeah. And like, Gary Shandling was always there when I was like, I feel like we we were for sure his home club. And, you know, we're the home club for a handful of acts like that. They like the fact that they can call myself or Mike and say, hey, can I drop in on this night? And, you know, if we have the time for them to do that we're not going to tell anyone else Mm -hmm. so they can come down and truly work on stuff and not have to Mm -hmm. worry about it getting out online or, or us padding the crowd with a bunch of people that we know are going to like this guy when he's just coming down to work on stuff and not necessarily wants to be performing in front of a a crowd that uh, has expectations. Yeah. If you say you're going to go to the comedy store, like it's up, like, I mean, I don't know how many times I've gotten like notifications that are like Dave Chappelle's going to be at the comedy store at 8 PM. It's like, I'm sure they're yeah. Sometimes they'll even post their, their lineups and on the side, it'll say special guest dropping in and you're, and put the name on there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always like, Oh, that's interesting. So, yeah, we don't do that for the most part. Most of the ex-assists not to. They just want to work on something. Right. 
And so uh, uh, we've done some of my New York comedian there. friends listen to this. So Chris Rock, if you looking for like a safe club or anything like this, is the you <laughs> know any of those big the guys. Club. <laughs> what up, Chris? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just one of them, <laughs> a lot of big, one big fan. fans out there. This podcast. <laughs> so that explains the comedy part. Yeah, uh, and you you got you're huge into wrestling. I know yep. that because I've I've always loved wrestling. Yep. My Me whole too. life. But I've always loved wrestling like more of as like an identity of like people like, oh, you know who loves wrestling? Jeff. Like it was like more a, a thing about me as opposed to like watching every week. I didn't like, there was, I took a big gap off and then I get back into it and then I take like probably a year off and then get back. Where now I feel like because of our, our we have a wrestling thread and like we have so many friends that we just yeah. be like, you know what? We love wrestling. Now I watch a lot like a part-time job i'm watching right? so much wrestling. there's so yeah. much yeah. stuff out there that it's crazy and yeah. you live in I, florida i grew up in florida and down in key west florida and uh championship wrestling from florida used to come down to our high school and uh and put on a show every uh let's say four months maybe three times a year or so and uh a bunch of my friends were into it so i thought it was the coolest thing in the world and we'd go down there and see those shows and then it was on like saturdays at at noon, I think. And so you could watch the, you know, the, the show Saturday at noon and then go out and still do all your awesome. fun stuff. And like, who were the kid. guys that you saw as a kid in that little, like, so little arena? Dusty that... Rhodes was the big, uh, so you saw him before he like, really even popped. Well, uh, he was famous in, for us, yeah. you know, and he, but he didn't I, TV pop, but nobody had TV pop. Right, well, in the eighties, yeah, like exactly. so, it was at NWA territory. So Ric That's Flair huge. was the big champion back mm-hmm. then, but Dusty Rhodes was a champion for a little while as well. And I probably started watching in like eighty two would have been when I first started watching. But Dusty Rhodes uh, was the the leader of the the good guys, the family there, and it was him and Barry Windham and Blackjack Mulligan and Mike Rotundo and Mike Graham and Steve Kern. Nice. And then the bad guys were always uh, uh, Kevin Sullivan was the leader of the bad guys all the time and it was kevin sullivan the purple haze uh maya singh was the name of one of the guys his name was bob roop but uh so uh those were the main the main factions that were always going what about the free birds you ever see the free birds Birds came through for a little while sure michael hayes and terry gordy and and buddy roberts yeah it was fun did you take time off watching wrestling oh yeah, yeah yeah so i started so I, I watched Florida wrestling until I went to college. And then in college, uh, we ended up watching uh, uh, Atlanta wrestling. And we'd go up. One of my roommates was into wrestling. So we would drive to Atlanta to the Omni and uh, always try to go see wrestling whenever it was maybe, maybe like twice a year or something. And that was really fun. And we'd surround it by going to Braves games or Falcons games yeah, or yeah, even mix the Hawks game. You know, we'd try to make stuff work like that, make it an entire weekend. Uh, so I got into NWA wrestling and would watch it a little bit through college. Took a little bit of a break, got back into it uh, probably in the mid '90s. And again, I was an NWA fan, which became WCW. <clears throat> so I was watching WCW, and then when during like the Monday Night Wars, yeah, I would actually big. I would I would watch the WCW show live, and I would uh, tape Raw on my VHS and then watch raw Good afterwards. Most people did it the other yeah. way yeah. because nitro did a replay right after the show. They'd show right. the show oh, yeah. and mm, then smart. they'd have a replay. Yep. I would just I, switch I was back such a like WCW a moron. fan that I was constantly <laughs> just like I had to, that was, you know, you ended up choosing one or the other that who you really followed. Oh, yeah. And because I had always been more of an NWA fan, I just ended up sticking with WCW through it. The losers in the end of the money. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing about wrestling that I appreciate is anyone who can love wrestling has an open-mindedness to the idea of like life. Like they're going to be like, yeah, I'll go with you on this. Like there, it feels like people have like this block towards wrestling. Like take Joe Rogan, for example, he, and this is a quote from Stone Cold Steve Austin when I met him is like, how can Joe Rogan have an intelligent conversation about almost any subject in the world? He'll talk about how like maybe Bigfoot, it can, you know, maybe is able to work a different dimension and that's how people can't see him. Maybe that's how, you know, maybe aliens, maybe Bigfoot's an alien, or maybe we need to be on a different level of plane before we can see all the creatures that are around us. But then someone brings up wrestling and he's like, oh, that's stupid. Like yeah. He can't even understand that it's like a TV show that people love. It's just fun from as a youth. Yeah. Loving it and just considering it fun from there that yeah. growing up, I, it never changed for me that it was always just... I enjoy going 
to see the shows. I enjoy watching on TV and I watch it almost still like a little kid where I'll be rooting for a guy, <laughs> yeah. you know, and uh, I'm, I'm happy when I see fun things happen on there. Yeah. So I, this I, is great. We I talked about this on it. the, when Sean Waltman was here, at the X-Pac, I was saying, that's how I watch wrestling. Like a kid. Let's just, I hope, I don't want to know what they're like in the locker room or right. I heard he's in real life. He's a, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care about any of that. Yeah. I just like, now I do like some of that stuff because I like it so much mm-hmm. that you end up following that stuff, and it's so easy nowadays with the internet to, to get information. Find so yeah. much more personal stuff that's going on, and that's almost just as interesting as what's happening in front of the TVs. Yeah. But I still, when I watch it, I'm, I'm still just like, oh, this is fun, and I'm I'm chanting and cheering with <laughs> yeah. everybody, and I'm applauding, and I I truly watch it as a fan. Yeah. Um, but I think that's one of the things we I don't know if it made the earlier part, but you and I have in common, and that. We like just being happy and having fun. Yeah. That's one of the things where I, I think we both have that vibe and we bonded over that a little bit early on where we're just both like, oh, we're pretty carefree. Yeah. We have a good time and, and can walk into, you know, if I go see a movie, I go in with almost no expectation. Absolutely. I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to watch something for an hour and a half to two hours and hopefully enjoy it and, you know, watch it. I don't. I laugh with uh, there's a comedian Leo Flowers who walks out of probably every oh, other movie he gosh. sees. <laughs> I've never walked yeah. out of a movie. I've sat I through some stinkers. Me neither. But I, I just go, okay, this is going to be fun. Yeah, yeah, and I spent yeah, the money. Let's do? watch it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I but you're also it. the guy that loves watching the dogs in between the halves of the Clippers games as yeah, much as the Clippers games. Yeah, yeah, and and name me a person who doesn't, Aaron. <laughs> and, uh, you mean winners of America got talent? All those fans that you go like, this is where I'm going to go to the bathroom. Besides Tom Cotter, name one person who doesn't like those dogs are incredible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but some people don't see that. They're just like, oh, right. dogs. They're not going in with the open mind. Yeah, and having right. fun. I'm here right. to watch a serious competition between athletes. Right. Leo Flowers, I adore him so much. But uh, one of my favorite things about Leo, similar to what you're explaining, is that like he's never had an indifference or small opinion about anything. Right. Very passionate he, about one way or the other. He has oh, a take. One time I got there and he was giving the room a little lecture, which, you know, I'm not making fun of him, but he yeah. was like giving me this, giving me and the room a lecture about like, no, man, you just got to man up and you got to love her with all your heart. You got to work <laughs> as hard as you can. Relationships are tough. You be a man about it. You do the right thing and you do. Uh-huh. And then within a month, he's like, it's easier. It's easier to be single. You don't have to deal with these kind of things. The the and I'm like you with the same amount of passion, the same amount of vigor. Yeah, like yeah. he's just speaking like this. I and then last time I was there, he was passionately talking about a very nice comedian who's very funny and talented, and just a nice, kind woman. Erica Rhodes brings cookies for the green room. That's the type of gal she is. She just she goes, you know what? I wanted everyone to have cookies, and I bought these cookies. Yep. And Leo Flowers had such strong opinions about how they were shit cookies, <laughs> right. and they <they're>, like <laughs> store bought trash that he would never put in his mouth. And if you want the best cookie, you've got to go to blankety blank. Right. And then I just the other day on it, I saw on someone's Instagram story. I think it was Yas your Lester's or someone I'm not sure but it was at your club oh. so it might maybe it wasn't Probably last year yeah. um, uh, how about how Leo was like walked out of Avengers he was yeah. so offended that he walked out of the movie uh, walked out and then sees it a second time <laughs> and sits through it unbelievable he yeah. wouldn't have to see it a second time if he didn't walk out <laughs> exactly that's, but that's just the type of guy he is, <laughs> which is the polar he's, opposite. You know what part he's he walked very, out at? Like what no, made him? I don't remember because I tuned out of the conversation uh, like most of us did because yeah. they're all just crapping on him. <laughs> yeah, because he's crazy. He's a crazy person. And yeah. They're like living in these extremes. Right. Uh, I do and, love and, him. And yet he's very intelligent. He's, you know. Oh, yeah. He, he's great talker. Handsome, so, funny, yeah. like charismatic. Like I right. love everything about Leo. So when he starts talking, you're, you're in vested But he might be a hard guy to trust. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just, like, be like, I definitely wouldn't buy a timeshare from Leo Flowers. <laughs> yeah, he's a great. Good guy. Uh, I like pretty much everyone that you book down there, which we've talked about in private before. But like, I've never seen anyone that makes all the best decisions with running those type of things. Me and Aaron were talking about how like Netflix seems to just say they give out so many comedy specials. And Aaron was saying that if they could pick one person who is just like, okay, we need to trust this division with someone who's going to um, pick only five specials for this next year. You could pick five specials for the next year, but we know all five of them are going to be home runs. It would be the filter that you run your club with, in my opinion. I think having been there for so long, 
I have a very good idea of what works for our audience and what they're expecting. Mm -hmm. And I always say that I have two bosses. I have my boss, Mike, and then my other boss is our audience. Now, one boss can fire me immediately. The other (laughs) boss is going to take a long time. (laughs) But if they start dwindling out and we don't have much of a crowd because I'm not putting on what they're... They want, then uh, uh, slowly they can get rid of me as well. But you've told <laughs> me some happened. great stories about guys that are like, um, like I don't want to say their name unless you're comfortable with it. Like you can decide that. But like someone will be like, um, come with another comedian who's a comedian, yep. and then they'll be like, oh, I'm not ready to do this club yet. Like, the, and they acknowledge that, and you respected that they acknowledged that at where they were in their career. Wasn't like Frank Caliendo one of the guys who did that a long time ago? No, or no? Frank has a... It wasn't Frank. Frank is a unique story. I saw him on Premium Blend, uh, which was a Comedy Central like mm-hmm. show back in the day where people could do, acts would do like six or seven minutes. They'd have three or four acts on a show. It became Live at Gotham. Yeah, and uh, he was on with Scott Henry, and they were both from the Wisconsin area, I believe, oh, Arizona, Milwaukee or I think, so, or something like. No, no not, that's where he lives now, but oh, that's okay. not where he grew oh, okay. up. And so, since they were both on the show together, and I thought I was like, "Wow, this guy does great impressions." And he was more of a. Uh, I remember Mike Lacey watching and going, "Wow, we need to find this guy. His cool. impressions are fantastic." And I'm like, oh, "He's good." You know, and I, I think there's not many guys doing impressions, so it'd be fun to have him. But I don't, I don't know. Mike's like, no, this guy's going to be huge. huge. That's great. And so reached out to Scott Henry and say, hey, do you know this guy personally? You're on the show with him, and you guys are from the same area. And Scott said he knew him, and he tried to put him in contact. And then uh, Frank wasn't living out in L.A. yet, and he was, but he was in town and going to be doing like a spot at the Bray Improv. And this is going to be the old Brea Improv, which I think starting next week, it's going to be the third old yeah. Brea Improv. Jeez. But it used to be in like a little strip mall. It had this really long stage, is what I always remember. Uh, you could, from side to side, probably take you 20 seconds to walk really? across. Yeah, That's man. so unnecessary. It took forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody ever used it. Right. Uh, but he was there, and I remember going down and, and seeing his act. And uh, and meeting him and then talking about the club and the next time he was coming out to L A he dropped in and we started to get to know him from there and and maybe um, it's Tom Green that you told me that Tom Green yes that is I think that's the story yeah there you go he came down with Jeremy Hotz one time mm. and he was watching the show and then came back afterwards. And what was interesting there is that, so Jeremy introduces us and I had, I had watched Tom yeah, on his TV show. It was hilarious. Favorites. And I knew that he had done some stand up up in Canada. And that was one of the things he did early on before mm-hmm. doing the, or while doing the TV show, I guess. And so when he was at the club, Jeremy ends up leaving and Tom hangs out with us and hangs out with me in the green room. And he's like, Hey, I want to ask you some questions. I'm thinking about jumping back into stand up. So we talked for a little while and he couldn't have been nicer and mm-hmm. very smart. And, uh, we had a great conversation and he was like, yeah, I, you know, I've dabbled in it, but I haven't, you know, given it the full go and, you know, but I, I think I'm going to, and, um, uh, saw him a, a little while later and he was headlining one of the clubs, I think Brea again, and went down and saw him there and it was solid. There was still a lot of work to be done, but now sure. he's been doing it nonstop for, I think the last I've heard he's getting good. Probably, yeah, really good. I was going to say seven or eight years. He's going to be a guest on, on here. And I've, I've always, oh. I like want to be able to communicate that I like grew up. Watch that show. Like he shaped, I think, a lot of my humor. Like how yeah. much I love messing with people and like the money from strangers. Like all that pranks stuff. pranks on his parents. So good. Oh, yeah. So good. Like and still silly. Like it wasn't like Jackass where it's like you're just like ruining someone's house and then being like, hey, hey mom, right. I right. blew up your kitchen. I will always remember he, he painted like a, 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 a woman on his dad's car and called it the Slutmobile. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just I just love that. Oh, but such I just good I stuff. think he's his, his so side great. Kick, was it Glenn or Glenn? Yes. Yeah, he had the sidekick. And oh, he picked so on Glenn cool. a lot. Oh, yeah, I was yeah, afraid yeah. to get divorced over it. Oh, wow. yeah, oh, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he was. Great. I just remember I that show. I want to be able to tell him how much like he's shaped my humor and how much I like loved it. But I also, it's always a delicate thing. You don't want to tell a guy right. like. How do you? So you have now moved into this area where you're hanging out with a lot of celebrities, a lot of famous people Mm -hmm. with your job. Uh, Do you feel comfortable doing that? And how much of you being a fan versus you being... I'm always just really honest about... 
a how friend. much I like them. But I think I'm like that with my regular friends too. I always let them know how I feel yeah. about them and like how they're great qualities. And I'm always like trying to encourage those kind of things. So I think it comes off natural when I say it to them. Sure. <laughs> like I'm always just like, yeah, I, I think you're the best. And they're like, oh, Jeff, you're so nice. And that, I think that when they hear me say it, they go, that's just how he is. Do you yeah, feel uncomfortable around anybody? I'm sorry, Tony. That, yeah. Um, no, not necessarily. I think I, I get genuinely starstruck with wrestlers. I, when I, when Hulk Hogan came to see me in Tampa, oh, yeah. <laughs> I screwed up a sentence just trying to communicate a very basic principle. Like, and I think even he looked at me like, what is this guy trying to, you ever seen that news YouTube video of the news reporter who had like a stroke and she's like, that, 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 like, and, like that's what I did trying to talk to Hogan because I'd been waiting for this moment since I was like five. Of course. Uh, so what happened was he's introducing, or I was in. He just came in. Yeah. And I'm with Brooke Hogan, and uh, I give her a big hug, and then I go, "Oh, nice to meet you." I didn't know whether to call him Terry or Hulk right. or whatever, so I just waited, and I said, "This is my buddy Jeff Z. Uh, this is so and so," and he goes, "Nice to meet you." And I go, "How often do people?" This is what I tried to say. How often do people do the other half of the introduction? Like, do people? You're at such a level. Did they introduce they you know as who Hulk you Hulk. are. So, like, d- d- when's the last time someone had to be like, uh, Jeff Z, this is Hulk Hogan. You know, like, it's not like Jeff had to be like, and your name? Right. Like, we all know. <laughs> right. And I was trying to communicate that, and it just came out like, how many, every, <laughs> did, w- like, your whole life, because you're famous. It was, like, the worst. <laughs> and that was the first sentence Hulk Hogan heard me say. Yeah. And I bet he thought, oh, this is going to be a really funny comedy right. show that I'm going <laughs> to. It's awful. But uh, with the Exception of wrestlers, I'm like, I, I pretty I, comfortable. Yeah, I'm real comfortable with it. And it's athletes easy. though, yeah, I don't get starstruck with them. Uh, Griffey a little bit, but it's yeah. just because I didn't know what to say. So I even like embellished a little bit about how much I loved his dad because I was like, well, I think he, you know, he'd like to hear that. Yeah. I think how much because I did. I loved his dad. His dad was really nice to me when mm-hmm. I was a kid and would sign stuff. And I met his dad before him, so I thought maybe if I lead with that, he'll think, mm-hmm. oh, like this is a nice guy who genuinely I think it just it fits you like. Being in that realm, meeting people like that, because the one thing about you, you're the most genuine person. Right. Oh, so I think man. it just it just yep. comes off naturally. Like yeah, we got to hang out with Dave Valley at the Mariners game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was so fun. And was Dave was like, <laughs> Dave Valley was the like, catcher, catcher for the yeah. for the Mariners. And growing up, before we had Dan Wilson, Dave Valley was like the guy, like the Mariner catcher. Like, and it was such a young age for us too. Like, it was very key for me. I'm older than Tony, so maybe you don't remember Valley as much. How, yeah. How old are you, Tony? I just turned 27. Okay. And so for me, when I was like, I was like, oh, that's my favorite player besides Griffey, of course. Like, that's my favorite guy. So to hang out with him now, he's, I feel like he's always like very proud. Like, he's like, oh, hey, now I'm going to get him some hot dogs and now I'm going to get him some beers. (laughs) And that that was a funny story. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And I felt bad. I was like, I was like, I'll eat that hot dog for you. But he put a bunch of stuff on it. Dave Valley got us hot dogs. Nice. And they took us in the booth and they did all these things. And he's like being so sweet. We got to hang out with him out there. Took the photos, did the whole thing. The whole game is just being a great host, which is what he does, you know, whenever I go. Um, Because I bring different friends. So he's excited to give the same experience to my friends. But he got us hot dogs. I don't eat meat. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And so yeah. now I'm just like holding a hot dog. And he was like, well, first he was like, well, who did eat their hot dog? There was like, yeah. left. <laughs> and he saw me eating it. He saw my brothers <laughs> eating there. So it's like, I can't be like, oh, I didn't eat mine. Like he, I had a conversation with oh, him yeah. while I was eating it. I walked around with an uncomfortable just amount. Just slowly yes, yeah, the exactly. table. And I was eating the bun around it. To make it. it look like he was eating it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell, because it's our, it's the gesture is so nice. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. To yep. just get us hot dogs right. and have them like on a tray. Uh, it was so uncomfortable and weird but um i love dave valley to death one of the nicest the best. dudes ever the be- like one is of the it, best nights isn't it great we always hear hey you don't want to meet your heroes oh. and yet there's so many of our heroes it's and people that we best. admire or looked up to that you go god unless, such a good guy such unless a good your hero's person. mark maron but other than that uh. meet your heroes <laughs> <laughs> well it's true like i but is it so there you go that's my point though is that you're calling out somebody specific versus if we talked about hey you know who's a nice guy i think we can go on for days absolutely especially yeah. in the true. comedy world exactly. absolutely but it just yeah. hurts when it's a guy you really hope is great yeah. and he's just is like i'm too busy right when they dismiss well, you that's the thing is, i can if i listed my 20 heroes mm-hmm. and i probably met like 18 of those 20 because the other ones just died like i, I never will get yeah. to meet macho man i'll never get to meet oh, you know yeah. like uh a richard Pryor or whatever um but if you just list, if i listed all my heroes every time i've met them it's been great 
Like every every one, and maybe I just pick nice heroes. Right. <laughs> like Brian Regan was could not have been more sweet. Yeah. Like the first time I ever met him, I was like, "Hey, dude! Like you're the reason I." St-. I'm sure he hears this all the time. You're my favorite comedian. You're the reason I got into stand up. Like he must have heard this speech seven thousand times. But he made a point to like shake my hand yeah. and like receive it and be like, "Thank you, man. That means a lot to me." And like he he gave me the moment I was hoping for. And then Hulk Hogan, same thing. And Stone Cold Steve Austin and Griffey. Like so, I was tell people definitely do it it's worth yeah, it yeah, like it's too. not going to change your perspective right. right just don't come at them when they're like taking a piss or something yeah exactly then you might not have a great experience absolutely right. well, that's your fault yeah. not no, you always say never when somebody's like, eating let me help you while you're taking a piss <laughs> <laughs> who's who's the person if you could pick that you would want to meet the most like Ooh, who's the who's still the hero? alive or could they be dead yeah let's do still alive because you know maybe we can figure something out let's see let's do you have somebody in mind? I have you? Who do I want to meet? Like, uh, The Rock. I've never met The Rock. I've oh, the loved him for 20 years. Yeah. I, I liked Stone Cold more than The Rock when I was a kid, but I've met Stone Cold and it was great. Yeah. 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 So The Rock. The Rock. It's a good one. That's a very good one. Your, uh, your hero's blowing up right now. I know. I, I'd, rather, I'd, rather, I'd like to have a second go with uh, Donald yeah, Glover. He he's really loves Donald Glover. But and he's the hottest person on the planet right now. Yeah. Currently. Yeah. yeah. Which well, he deserves right. it. Yeah. Which is good. Appearance oh, so yeah, I kind of had a similar experience like he did with Hulk when I met Donald Glover, where I was just kind of like, Bumbled didn't know what it. to say. Yeah. But yeah. he was super nice about it. Um, so I day. used to see him all the time in downtown LA when I lived down there. Like I would see him like once a week, I yeah. think. But what about you, Richard? I don't know. I'm trying to think. There's, you know, I think Obama would be really cool. It's a great yeah. one. You know? Uh, I don't know in the sports don't know if he's world. A hero. I'm just <laughs> he Omar's. Uh, uh, so that would be a guy that I think would really set me back a little yeah. bit. Where Can I, I just go, change Whoa. my answer to an AR-15? <laughs> oh, sorry. Aaron loves guns. That's his new thing. It's his new wrestling Do you shoot. Good. I used to uh, when I was in Arizona, but it's not, it's an ironic love of guns. I, at work, was playing gun videos behind music to see how long it would take before anybody said anything. And the problem was, is it went on for about five months and no one said anything. Uh, and, and you then, got a promotion. And now when I'm playing music, they're like, no guns? What's the deal? <laughs> That's how much of a legend Aaron is at work. That he gets away with the most knucklehead, <laughs> weird stuff you'd ever, like... It's so like alt comedy. What you're doing at yeah. work is like crazy person. Yeah, stuff. and it was like, but now I know a whole bunch about guns because look up all these gun videos. And I'm like, well, I need like a good eight minutes of sustained fire with a little bit of break so it matches the song. You can't go overload it. You can't underdo it. Yeah, you can't go shotgun. Let's get yeah, out of here. Shotgun like, videos. Yeah, going we were watching that. something. We I forget what we were watching. Were you in the background turned on a gun? Yes. It was. He uh, turned on a gun video. He didn't turn on a gun. Right. <laughs> Like, but it yeah. was, he turned on a gun video and I was like, AR-15? <laughs> and he already knew the video. <laughs> yeah. Sound. He was, oh, that was one of his early videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because totally. was like, like, I knew it. This like really, which actually I sent in the wrestling text once, a picture of like this guy with like a red beard, like looking backwards. Wait, just holding recently. A gun. Yeah. Yeah. And that was it? more for just Aaron, just okay. because like, that's the guy. I called you out. Like, who's... Well, yeah, am I supposed to know who this guy is? Right, man. He, like, what he knew the video about? by name. He knew the video that I selected and the gun that he. He's like the sommelier of like of guns. <laughs> guns? You just keep yeah, piling the these great. things on, video guns. like your your search history with guns, but also going like with the adult con and stuff. Yeah. Like, you're gonna end up on an FBI watch. Oh, list. he already is a hundred percent. So oh, he knows that list. <laughs> Do you care? So everybody's there with their cameras. Do you care that you're in a place like that where people are videotaping you? Uh, for the adult wise, you have to worry thing? about yeah. I do uh, think a lady recognized Jeff. Oh, really? Who? Yeah, remember when we were trying to get into the VIP area? Oh, yeah, yeah. And you're like, is there any Not admission? The right Despite the fact that he's wearing <laughs> we have these VIP wristbands. And he's just yeah. like, how do we get in? And she's like, uh, just one joke. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're yeah. like, oh, gotcha. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, oh. Here's how right, uncomfortable right. the now? setting was. That when she asked me for a joke, I was speechless. I was like, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, You pointed at me, and then I went, let's just get inside. Because <laughs> I was so yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm just overthinking, like, why are we here? Why did we think this right. was a good idea? Right. It's not like a porn convention. This is These girls wish they were porn stars. Oh. They're like strippers. This was like it's a stripper just convention. just a stripper convention. So it's girls aspiring to be a thing that I think anyone could be a porn star nowadays like so it was yeah, that's, that's like how, aspiring to be a waitress did you go to the website 
website to check out what you were going to see or did we, you just go off well, the billboard? It, well, because that's the thing. I saw the billboard. It was more ironic for us. So I already knew we were doing it for Mother's yeah. Day. Um, but then I did <laughs> go. Day. That's why yeah. it's funny. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> In fact, I tried to invite two of my other friends and they're like, no, we're not right. doing that. So, because uh, I... He had to go. I bought the ticket. You know? yeah, I yeah. paid for it. But these guys, I was not going to buy theirs. And so they're like, oh, right. no, 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 no. But um, I did look at some of the girls and I was like, yikes. Like this is, I had a feeling it was okay, going to be yeah. pretty bad. You're, when we saw it before we went, we were like, yikes. When we were actually there, we're like, double yikes. Double yikes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's, it was, it felt. Hey, you did it. Yeah, exactly. But Story me, you know, I'm not going to look yeah. at anything for a long time with. <laughs> You know what? I think you. I haven't had an erection since. Ah, uh, <laughs> gosh. I, I'm one I'm who's just always like, right hey, now. let's go do stuff because you'd rather live with the, hey, it wasn't the greatest time yeah. versus the regret of never doing it. Right. That's it's true. Well, it's like you ever go to a minor league baseball game? Yes. Now imagine it was only attended by strippers, <laughs> minor league strippers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it also was kind of cool that they gave us those free tickets because that kind of made it feel like it was free. Like they're like, oh, here's free tickets to come back next time because oh, right, we know right, right, it's right. going to be also, so like, bad can't today. Give it to Richard. That has our name on it. Yeah. Did they check ID? Yeah, yeah that's how specific it was. See, it says zero four one on it because that's the last three digits of my driver's license. They're going to check when I come oh, back. They probably want to. And make, I'm coming back. They probably want to make sure <laughs> that you're not going out there and selling that right. since they gave it to you for yeah. free. Let me. Yeah. Well, the level, level of security, have a time, and, go the level of security at AdultCon is. Uh, well, I think they also knew that. Yeah, I think that they the did this preemptively. Red. I think so many people complained that morning, like yeah. that this isn't what we thought it would be. Um, that they were like, no, it's not normally like this. It's Mother's Day, and these girls have right. kids. <laughs> like, I, I, was, I, mean, I just showed so. the card to Richard. None of these ladies were there. I can uh, promise yeah. you. <laughs> There was not a six in the bunch. I like that they already know they're coming back in February of next year and have it booked. And, oh my gosh. I want to be clear that it was Aaron that said not a six in the Who bunch. Who would it be? I, well, Sorry. I know, but maybe someone listening is like, that's yeah. a fan. I yeah, will sign Aaron. my name on that. Yeah. Aaron Marsh says there wasn't a six in the bunch. <laughs> and if you're sitting there, you're like, I was there. I know. Yeah, that is true. In fact, there's a heaps of videos somewhere in a creepy man's house of. Oh of, God! Of the I did. I wasn't to answer your question. I was. I, I wouldn't no, care about that yeah. kind of stuff. I think that's one of the beauties of being a single dude too. Is yeah. like I don't have to like really get too carried away by that kind of stuff. Right. I remember my. Uh, you should have just opened a booth. One of my girlfriends a long time ago, she was always like annoyed when I'd post photos from inside of like my home or so. She's like, you can't do stuff like that. Like. But now I just don't care. Or th- people about- are like, hey, can I send you something like on my Instagram? And I'll be like, yeah. And I'll just give him my ad. I don't care. I don't, I'm not too cautious. And by my about address, that, he means my address. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, because like, because there are some people, some comics that have had, you know, different stalkers. And oh, yeah. Whatnot. Well, I've got some people that are stalkers, uh, but. It doesn't scare me. And with, yeah, I thank you for subscribing and rating the show. <laughs> <podcast. laughs> well, I do want to ask you that while we're on the subject. So I've known you for so long as a single guy. Yep. And uh, and now you're married to yep. a beautiful, incredible woman yep. named Chantel. Is it Sean? I always do this. Chantel. Chantel. Chantel, like a light switch on. You'll make like her, Sean you're... Kemp. Well, I asked right. her personally. I asked her right to her face. I said, listen, I'm sorry. Is it Chantel or Chantel? And she's like, oh, that's sweet. It's yeah. Chantel. But then I forgot the answer yeah, that she fun. tells me. Uh, what's how's married life? Fantastic. Uh, I think it's all as they say about finding the right partner, you yeah. know, and found somebody that uh, we uh, were very different. There are a lot of qualities I I admire in her that I don't have. I, I, I we were talking about someone earlier. I love the uh, a bubbly personality, someone that's fun, yeah. someone that can walk into a room and feel comfortable immediately. Because I'm not those things at all times, you know, where mm-hmm. I can walk into a party and I'm going to gravitate towards a wall. And sure. if there's somebody I can talk to, I'll spend the night talking to that one person <laughs> yeah, versus that meeting that a little bit of well. everybody. <laughs> and she has an ability to sit down and talk to anyone about anything very yeah. smart or just very silly and, uh, and have a good time. And so, uh, uh, those are the qualities I, I was looking for and found and admired. And we always tell people that our, our, our differences, we we kind of fill in the gaps for each other versus uh, uh, budding by being two different people, and and uh, uh, those aren't those not working. Instead, yeah. for us, it, it really has worked together. So, and I think uh, I tell people as well that being a little bit older, uh, we're both. I'm in my 40s, and she's younger mm-hmm. uh, than that. I won't give her age out. Yeah, uh, 20s. But you are saying, <laughs> but you are saying it's, you, it's better to have a younger lady. That's what I uh, found out that uh, uh, you know a little bit more 
uh, secure in who I am and sure. what I'm looking for and, and her as well. And so not going into a situation going saying, Hey, you need to make these certain changes about yourself, uh, or, or looking at things as a negative when I can go, Hey, this is a positive. Yeah. We went to Disneyland together. Yep. Uh, Marsh was there Marsh as well. Was there as well. And, uh, I just loved similar to what you're saying. I'm just kind of confirming it, but she was just like down for whatever. Like, yeah, yep. you know, always we, we want to go on that. Sure. Let's yeah. go on that. Like, you guys want to do this? No. Okay. We don't have to like, she's just so easy to be around that way. And like fun. Does she and just yes and everything in not life like be that? a problem. What's that? Does she yes and everything in life like that? For the most part. Yeah. You know, she's, she's pretty easy going and we very rarely butt heads. So to say, so it's awesome. Yeah, and, and then and she you know loves what? Let dogs. me say as well that Marsh. That's another one of those places where Marsh is fantastic to have because oh, yeah. he Disney is his home. Oh and yeah, if yeah. you're gonna be with anybody, uh, because he will take someone like myself who is a novice there asking silly questions yeah. and explain what's going on as I well as if you're it. a true a nerd reason for he everything. still has more I've told knowledge people, for you. And this is before sure. me and Aaron were as close as we are now. I've told people. Who have never even heard or know who Aaron Marsh is? Like, hey, I got a guy. If you're going to Disneyland, take him. He will show you all the best things. He's super fun to be around. He's a funny guy. But this is the guy. He knows all the yep. like the first place to go to. They know. Oh, don't go uh, that time of day because that ride's right. going to be nonsense. And uh, and like to just strangers. I've just knowing an order off to of what things to go do. And and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and a shout out to our friends Christella and Steve for having us there because that was they made that trip so fantastic. Super and, fun. Uh, wow. I do want to thank they. Uh, we went with them when they had a tour guide. Yeah. Which I feel like I lose my identity a little bit in that because the tour sure, guide, sure. it's her job to be great at Disneyland. And you're like, but I'm great at Disneyland too. She's like, <laughs> I'm a professional. Oh, yeah. Actually, I forgot about this. Erin was like <laughs> competitive with the tour guide because she kept, and I don't want to, we won't say the tour guide's name or anything. She screwed up about five things information wise well, that correcting. no one would care or know. Right. But Erin would be like, actually, it's seven different princesses that are in this right you know like, some <laughs> kind of like, like little <laughs> trivial things you that know what's she good, knew that way, she did she's didn't. a sweetheart that, that she was really nice yeah she and was what's great nice though is that we had enough people in our in our group that when you start walking somewhere oh yeah naturally we all kind of separate a little bit mm -hmm. because you can't have mm -hmm. eight or nine people all walking in one you know as a as a pack and so you kind of fall back and aaron would be there and oh yeah you know you could ask him questions without Without you know? offending the yeah. guide, yeah. Going with a guide is a lot like going with someone who has a wheelchair. You know, you can, you're going to get to the front. Fantastic. You're going to get to the front right <laughs> it's away. It's me for going back there again. You know, yeah. it's a different experience. Yeah. It's a totally Not different thing. Lines and just oh, it was so much fun. Because they do like where I was saying, like, oh, you want to hit that one because it's the line lowers. Like, I'll give away one of the hints: is that if the fireworks are coming up, everyone's about to watch the fireworks. That's the time to go to the big A ticket things like uh, a Space nice. Mountain. Smart, especially if you can get in line while the fireworks are happening at Space Mountain. The line doesn't feel as long. You just watch fireworks. Sure, yeah, totally. I, but it's S just like smart. That doesn't matter if you have a guide. You're on Space Mountain in 20 right. seconds. You yeah. go, hey, is that right? Oh, I'm already on it right. by the time I finish the sentence. So it's like that kind of stuff goes away. It's a different experience. It's great. Yep. Sorry. Oh, also, yeah. sorry. Wait, why are you sorry? That's great. Oh, I maybe plug people my hear this. Find Hidden Mickey uh, Instagram account while we're at this part <laughs> no, of the conversation. I apologize for plugging yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, well, I will say shout out to Chantel for uh, having you, letting you be on this tonight because oh, she's, great. she's not going to get to go to a baseball game like she thought she was. So we're okay. sorry, Chantel. So for fine. Her, she's fine. Here's a ticket to adult con. <laughs> they come back in February. Yeah. She has to bring her hey, ID. Do you want to go try to go check this out? She'd probably like, oh, oh, she'd be the most beautiful woman there by a <laughs> yeah, thousand exactly. times. By a billion times. Yeah, the problem would be everybody would turn their phones from the strip over right. to your wife. Yeah, that's the part you wouldn't want. <laughs> yeah, for exactly. Sure. Well, Richard, thanks for being on here, man. I love you to a death. A true pleasure. Thank you, Jeff. I'm glad we've become such good friends over the years and and that of a true decade of friendship. That's Sincerely. really awesome. Yeah. And, you know, glad to know you. And then Ten more decades. Tony's more of a recent uh, yes. uh, friend. I wore my hat for you. I know. I love you yell at me. You got to brand it like yeah. Mars does. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad I've gotten to know Mars a lot better over the last year. Yeah, about a year, so, year and a half now. A lot more, you know. We, we, we crossed paths a number of times, but then over the last year, we've become good buddies. Yeah. So uh, uh, truly thankful. Thanks for having me yeah, on here. love and, to have uh, you back. Anytime. Anytime, buddy. Anytime. Friendship. How great was that episode? Uh, thank you, Richard, for coming. If you're listening to this, thank you so much for coming through to the Jeff Die uh, Friendship Podcast. Uh, big thank you to Tony, our producer. Give him a follow. Watch us play some games or at Jeff and Tony Play. 
uh, on YouTube, which is just youtube.com backslash Jeff Die. Uh, thank you to all the Patreon subscribers. Sincerely, uh, you guys paid for and made this whole setup happen. So we love you guys and we appreciate you. Um, if you watched or listened, thank you so much. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and comment. Unless you don't like it, then don't comment or rate. But if you loved it, please comment and rate and subscribe and tell your friends and family. Uh, maybe for Christmas, get them like a subscription to the podcast and be like, this cost me nothing, but it's you should listen to it. You know, something like that. Christmas is right around the corner. Uh, but we love you guys. And thanks for listening. And we'll see you next week with our guest, Brooke Hogan.